Did Sony just single-handedly mastermind the greatest cat and mouse game leading into next generation? Let's talk about it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Can y'all do me a huge favor before we get into this one? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because y'all know the deal. Y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right. So as I teased in the bumper there, that... I think that PlayStation may be a little bit more savvy, even with this new new regime, than a lot of us have given them credit for. Now, I could be wrong. And again, this is, I'm just, I'm going strictly off of opinion here. This is more of an opinion piece than anything. But in lieu of, <laughs> in lieu of recent information that has surfaced, courtesy of different, uh, you know, entities out there on social media and Sony themselves. It looks like that they played uh, possum for a little bit. You know, they did the old uh, rope a dope with Xbox by making it seem like that they were on their last leg. And then they've baited Microsoft into coming out and showing some things sooner than they may have anticipated. Meaning that we all are aware that Microsoft is going to E3 and Sony isn't. Um, now, even though we know that Microsoft is the least favorite out of all the main three consoles, I mean, now they're in third place to, to um, Nintendo Switch that, you know, came out three and a half years later. Um, you know, they're beating them in sales and stuff like that. So, Microsoft has a tall hill to climb. There's no denying that. But anybody that believes that Microsoft is going to be as flat-footed as they was last generation, even I, who have been highly critical of Microsoft, I've even pulled away my support uh, vehemently of the platform. Even I recognize that they're not going to come into this generation as flat-footed as they were before. They have a game plan, and in all likelihood, that game plan will put them in a, a slightly more favorable position, at least, going into next generation. That being said, I think too many people in 20, late 2019 and early 2020 were looking at the fact that Sony didn't have such great in 2019. And a lot of publications, I think, now decide that they're going to hedge their bets and they're going to side more with Xbox. So you've been seeing a lot more positive Xbox news and a lot more negative PlayStation news. And they're, he they're hedging their bets uh, because again, they figure that Microsoft might be in a better footing. Then let's fast forward to the Game Awards where Microsoft did drop a lot of jaws by releasing the Series X and having that, that, that demo, whatever type of demo you call it, but by having that demo of uh, Hellblade 2, which was impressive. So, in response, Sony had no viable response. I think they released the button trigger for their controller. They really had nothing to match that statement. And you've had people go back and forth over this whole fidelity, I mean, for the, the parody thing about, you know, Xbox Series X not having any exclusives to the, to the machine for the first few years and all that other stuff. But that's Microsoft stumbling on themselves. While Microsoft was either going up and down this roller coaster of, of media press, Everybody was looking at Sony like, what are you doing? You're not coming to E3. You're not making no announcements. Are you guys afraid? And I even question that, right? Well, it seems like everything now <laughs> is coming to light on why Sony has been doing what they've been doing. Okay. So I want everybody to take a look at this. This right here is a tweet from Game Central. And the tweet says, Sony doesn't seem to know how much PlayStation 5 will cost anymore than anyone else. As they imply, they're waiting to see what Microsoft does. So it has a little snide, you know, uh, uh, twitch to it. But here's the article from Metro. And Mo Metro goes straight to the, the source. They say, PlayStation 5 price depends on Xbox Series X, says Sony. 
You know, and Sony's admitted that it hasn't decided what the price for the PlayStation 5 will be. Saw that yet, and they're waiting to see what Microsoft does first. I'm gonna leave a link to the uh, to this this article below because it's very it's a very interesting read. And now I also back into a tweet from the homeboy Nibble out there on on Twitter. You know, and he's my homeboy. He's, he's my homeboy, even though Nibble had that slip up where he put out that that fake news about Borderlands 3 not having a performance mode. But that's okay. We forgive you, Nibble. He has the, he has a couple of tweets where he talks about PlayStation ex, explanation of when they're going to release content, and then he quotes what they've said in this link that they provided. We've begun to share some incredible features you can expect from PlayStation 5, but we're not quite ready fully to unveil the next generation of PlayStation. And he follows up with doesn't sound like a February reveal to me. And a lot of people, here goes the actual article. A lot of people are looking at this. Very small article, not enough there. And they'd say, if you want news, you know, on when the PlayStation 5 is coming, then sign up for our, our circular and we'll release it to you, right? And a lot of people are looking at that skeptically, all right? But I want to show you one more thing. And I normally don't show you this from this source because I don't get into rumor gate all like that. I mean, I we, we give our opinions and stuff and we try to put things together, but I'm not one of those ones that are out here in these forums chasing bibble watts of gigahertz. But according to, according to this source of Reset Air, and then I can you can match this source up to other entities out there on the interweb, <laughs> um, that Sony also experienced a dip in their performance over this quarter like Microsoft did. However, Sony's dip is half of what Microsoft's is. Microsoft's is 40%, Sony's is 20. Now granted, we're on the heels of the, the end of this generation and we're going into a next generation. But why do I figure that's important to, 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 to figure out? It's because this new regime they're financial strategists, okay? They're, they're, they're financial strategists more so than the mindshare game players like the last regime was, the Sean Laytons and the Yoshidas and everybody, right? So their focus is to make sure that they perform better than Microsoft financially. Because even though Sony sold more, on a percentage basis, which what the market really looks like, they really didn't perform better than Xbox. How so? Again, we'll go, we'll beckon back to 2018. 2018 was like the biggest year of Sony probably ever. And they literally destroyed Microsoft. They destroyed them. If it wasn't for the advent of, uh, you know, Game Pass being on the forefront and them having a long-term strategy, anybody else would have probably just said, would have bowed out. <laughs> they probably would have quit and that would have been it. Sony destroyed Microsoft as far as sales are concerned. Unit sales. They outdid them three to one in a lot of regards. Even though they did them out three to one, Sony brought in 16 billion, Microsoft, bought in 10 billion. I'm gonna do the math real quick. Let's do the math. Matter of fact, let me show you the math here. We're gonna divide 10 by 16. That's only a 62% increase. That's not a 300% increase like represent as a representation of their sales. The sales is only 62% higher as far as the sales revenue is only 62% higher than Microsoft's. That's not good market-wise. It's not about just how much money you got in the bucket. That money has to be dispersed for your, your losses and for you know how much you've had to pay third-party vendors. And Sony is a hardware company. So they have a lot more overhead when it comes to this gaming stuff than Xbox does. So Xbox is keeping a larger percentage of their 10 billion in all likelihood than micro than X than, than PlayStation is of their 16 billion because of that. So in come the new financial strategists under Jim Ryan. And they evidently are playing no games. 
Therefore, they're doing everything differently and a lot of us had our lips twisted and our faces turned. But by them having uh, Mark Cerny come out there and just a little dribblets about SSD and all other stuff, that, re that induced the reactive nature of Xbox. And I say that because look at what they did with Stadia. When Stadia made their pre-E3 announcement, they panicked. They start dropping meaningless and bloviating videos and all types of stuff. And everything that they do is reactionary to what Stadia has been doing in a lot of regards. Say what you want about how they're being perceived in a data collection phase. Don't be that fool. Don't do that. They understand what's on the horizon. Okay. And they have knee jerk reactions to it. And the same with Sony. Because Sony was making them look bad, even though they don't really consider Sony a competitive, they really want them to be an ally. But they understand how the game is being played, and they don't want the public perception to get even uh, sink even lower than what it is now. They had to come out with the Xbox Series X, and they had to staunchly support being at E3. Sony didn't do that. Why? Because they simply want to undercut Xbox. <laughs> Here's the thing, y'all. I'm going to tell it to y'all like this. If Sony is coming out with a 9.2 teraflop machine opposed to a 12.7 teraflop machine and Sony has the, the exclusive lineup that it has, right? And they can undercut. And, I mean, well, no, let, let me not get too far ahead. And Sony can use the development talent to make their 9.2 look like 13 teraflops like they did last generation they made god of war look like it was on a 7 teraflop machine on a 1.8 teraflop machine so if you got the development talent you got enough power in the hood under the hood to make you look uh, superior and you got the games to come with it and finally, you can underperform the Xbox? No better strategy. Now, I say that to say this. Look at this chart. Again, if this is correct, it appears that Sony may have, you know what I'm saying, lost out on some profit, you know, but not as much as Microsoft has. And we'll soon see. Again, I, I don't normally do the rumorville stuff. But if all this is true, even though we, in a disappointing fashion, we're not going to see Sony at E3. I think if you take into perspective what the purpose of this new regime is, they're strictly financial. If you take the new perspective, uh, 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 take the current perspective of this new regime, and you apply to the things that they've done, now it makes sense. And it is at the, at the minus of mind share in some regards, but it could take what they may have and boost it up even more as far as performance is they're concerned. And all I say to that is, wow, if that's the case, it's a masterful strategy. That being said, if they see success with this strategy, I hope Sony definitely comes back to doing the mindshare that they did and particularly showing up at E3 and doing their events. They, you know, they it really would mean a lot to us gamers for them to show their stuff like they did before. But if it's all at risk just for this one year to 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 you know put everything out on the table and do what they can with Microsoft's or Xbox's naivete and their desire to be Sony's friends so bad. In their knee-jerk reaction, they could have used all that to their advantage against Microsoft. You know what I'm saying? And whoa, <laughs> that could be a serious thing. But with that being said, those were my thoughts. That's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies. To the PNTS Network. Hard Knock Digital Culture, and of course, yes, here, the Stadia Dosage. Not here, excuse me. <laughs> to my other platform, the Stadia Dosage. With that being said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.